Hello, my name is Stanford Gibson. I am the sediment transport specialist on the HEC RAS team. And this video is going to show you how to make a terrain of a semicircular flume or a half pipe. This video will start by just creating a one dimensional geo referenced flume that the next video will actually convert to the terrain. So if you're interested in just creating a two dimensional terrain from semicircular 1D cross sections go directly to the next video. The actual flume that we're going to work with is a flume from Parsons et al, a paper from 2000 that used a half pipe or semicircular flume to model mud and debris flows. This is one of the validation and verification tests that we used for the non-Newtonian features in RAS, and so the next video will actually show you how to use this semicircular flume to simulate one of these mud and debris flow experiments. Both these videos are companion videos to the journal paper we've published on simulating these experiments. This video is just going to start with the mechanics of creating and geo-referencing a 1D flume, and then the next video will convert it to a 2D terrain for the mud and debris flow modeling. Some of the same principles are applicable to rectangular flumes, but there are a couple of distinct properties that rectangular flumes have, so we'll ha do a separate video on those. What we're showing on the screen right now is the actual final simulation of this mud and debris flow, both in RAS and the images from the paper to show where we're kind of headed with this. But we're actually going to start from scratch so you can follow along. The one bit of data that you'll find useful is I do have two cross sections that define semicircular cross sections at the upstream and downstream boundary that I'll use. This is with the accompanying Excel data sheet. The link will be in the description of the YouTube video. So let's start by creating a new project. Navigate to where you want to put it and give it a name. I'm going to call it Parsons Experiment 1A. And it tells us right off the bat that our units are going to be set to US customary, which of course we don't want. So we're going to go to options, unit system. And because we don't have anything in there yet, we can just set it to SI from the beginning without having to convert. And from now on, everything else will be set to SI. Okay, so we're going to start by creating a geometry file. To create a geometry file, you can go to either Edit Geometric Data, or you can press the Geometric Editor button. And we'll just start out by saving as, and call it Parsons Experiment 1A. Because we don't actually know where this flume exists in space, and we kind of don't care, we're going to just start out by creating a new river reach. We're going to choose this drawing tool. And I've found that flumes generally work better. The signs of the output tend to work better if you draw your flume from left to right relatively straight. Now, I'm not going to be super precious about making this flume straight left to right because we're actually going to go in and define these coordinates. Um, so we'll call this Parsons Flume. And now we have a reach. And so this reaches our 10 meter flume, but we've got it in arbitrary reference frame, and that's okay because we're going to go in and actually georeference it. But the next thing we're going to do is define our cross sections. And so we're going to push our cross section editor button, and that'll give our, us our cross section editor. And we're going to define this semicircular flume with two cross sections one at station zero, which is the downstream end, and one at station 10. This is a 10 meter long flume, so that'll be the upstream end. So we'll go to options, add new cross section, and we'll call the first cross section station zero. Station zero will be the downstream end, so the downstream reach lengths will be zero. The uh, experimentalists lined this flume with glued sand. So we're using an end value of 0 0.016. And the station elevation data, I just computed using the equation for a circle um, so that the Thalweg would be at zero at the downstream end. Now, this is a 14.6 centimeter diameter flume. And that means that if the thaw wig is going to be at zero and the center point is going to be at zero, then the stationing will go from negative 0 0.073 meters to positive 0 0.073 meters. So I'm just going to take the station elevation data that I computed and that is available in the spreadsheet and paste it in there. 
and press apply. And so now we have a semicircular flume. Now this might not look like a pure semicircle, but that's because the station elevation data is always distorted in the display. And if you were to scale it appropriately, it would actually be a semicircle. Um, what you will see here on the edges is that I added a little bit more resolution um, where appropriate. Whenever you define a curve in Cartesian coordinates, um, there are instances where you need a little bit more resolution to resolve the curve. And so then we're going to model this as a single channel. We're not going to have any overbanks in RAS, which means that our left bank and right bank will actually be the leftmost and rightmost point. And those will show up as red dots here to show that we're only modeling the center channel. Okay, so we have our downstream cross section. Now we're going to copy that to the upstream cross section. And we're gonna copy it to cross section 10, river station 10. And all of this is the same, except the downstream reach lengths are now 10 meters, because that's the distance between this cross section and the next one down. And the other thing that will be different is the elevation. Now this experiment has a 10.7 degree slope. And if we are to convert that to simple rise over run, it's a slope of 0.1861811, which when you multiply that over a 10 meter flume length is a rise of 1.861811 meters. Now we could just go into options adjust elevations, but RAS doesn't have that many significant figures. So what I've done is I've just created a second cross section in the Excel spreadsheet that has the same stations, but all the elevations are raised by that offset to give us the appropriate slope. We'll come here, we'll paste and apply. And if I right click here and say full plot, it'll bring us to the same cross section, but now adjusted for that slope difference. All right, so now I'm gonna save this geometry data. And you can see we have our flume and we have our cross sections, but none of this is georeferenced. And if we're gonna build a terrain out of this, we definitely are going to need to georeference it. So what I'm showing on the screen now is the coordinates that we're gonna to use to georeference this flume. Essentially, the center line station is going to go from X coordinate zero to X coordinate 10, because it's a 10 meter long flume. And the cross sections are going to go from Y coordinate zero to Y coordinate 0.146, because it's a 14.6 centimeter diameter flume. And then we'll center the center line station on that midpoint, which is 7.3 centimeters or 0.073. So the first thing we want to do is georeference this stream center line. So we're going to go to GIS tools and we're going to go to reach invert line table. And this gives us the center line station of our reach. Now these numbers don't make any sense because these are arbitrary reach units. And so our first point is going to be zero. 0 0.073 and then the uh, second point will be at station 10 0 0.073 and if we press OK now we've kind of lost the uh, vision of the flume because we were no longer in those arbitrary opening units and so we'll go to view set schematic plot extents and you can see that the initial plot extents were in this kind of arbitrary zero to one framework we haven't truly georeferenced this in any coordinate system but now we have a more correct arbitrary spatial system and so we'll say set to computed extents and that will allow us to view our flume in our new coordinate system now you'll notice that our cross sections are brown that means that they have not yet been georeferenced and we need to do that next so we'll go to gis tools and we'll go to cross-section cut line table. And these don't actually have any georeference data in them. And so we'll start with our upstream cross-section. And that's gonna go from zero, zero to zero, 0 0.146. Next, we'll go down to the downstream cross-section 
and that is going to have x coordinates of 10 and then go from 0 to 0 0.146. All right, so we have georeferenced our flu, and we can save it. And now we're ready to turn it into a terrain in RAS Mapper. The next video will show how to convert this 1D cross section into a terrain, and then the third video will actually build a non-Newtonian model to simulate flow through this. This work and this video were funded by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Flood Risk Management Research and Development Program, and in particular the post-wildfire flood risk management work unit of that program, which is PI'd by Ian Floyd, who is a co-author on this paper along with Ronald Heath and Alex Sanchez.